From the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, CBS Sports presents the 1979 Cotton Bowl Classic. This 43rd annual Cotton Bowl game with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame meeting the Cougars of Houston. The worst ice storm in 30 years to hit this area has kept thousands of people at home today watching the Cotton Bowl game on television. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning here in Dallas. When Notre Dame was preparing for this game, they figured against a somewhat porous pass defense of Houston, they might ride the strong right arm of Joe Montana. Well, actually, it'll be a balanced attack. They've got good running in Vegas Ferguson and Jerome Heavens, but you're right, Lindsay. That's the key right there, the comeback kid, Joe Montana, who accounted for over 2,000 yards passing and 10 touchdowns. On the other side of the coin, the very quick feet of Houston quarterback Danny Davis. He runs the veer as well as any quarterback who has ever been in that offense. 1,500 yards total offense this year. And actually, I think the question with this slippery field is whether or not Houston will be able to run their Vera offense. Field condition and weather, a big factor to check on that now. Let's go down to Frank Lieber. Lindsay, I guess cold is just a state of mind here in Texas, but I'll tell you, it is cold. This will go down as the iciest cotton bowl in history. As you mentioned, the worst ice storm in 30 years has hit this city. Some 50,000 homes were out of electricity. It was that bad yesterday. It has left its mark in the field. Right now, the game time temperature is 22 degrees, and there's an 18 mile per hour wind out of the north. Now, that adds up to a chill factor of six degrees below zero. And that's what these two teams are going to be playing in this afternoon. And it's going to be a problem, obviously, as to whether or not they're going to display their uh, talents to their full capabilities. The field, well, it's not a good field to begin with. It's an old artificial turf field, and uh, they're going to tear it up after the Cotton Bowl game. The teams are coming on the field, as you can see behind us, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame with their head coach, Dan Devine. They'll be in white this afternoon. And the Houston Cougars, the Southwest Conference champions, will be in red. And everybody will be chilly. There is no question about that. There's going to be a lot of slipping and sliding going on on the floor of the turf here as 1979 gets underway in Dallas, Texas. It's a lot chillier in this part of the country, we understand, than it is up in New York and probably in even parts of Alaska. Snow flurry started to fall here within the last hour here at the Cotton Bowl, but the... Uh, the prognostication is for the weather to clear later on in the day and the temperature probably will get down to uh, something like seven or eight degrees in Dallas tonight. It should stay around the 20 mark for most of the afternoon. And as we said, there's a good possibility that the uh, that the uh, field may freeze before this ball game is out. And here come the Cougars and their head coach, Bill Yeoman. Houston Cougars, champions of the Southwest Conference. The champion of the Southwest Conference is the host team in the Cotton Bowl game. So Houston says we'll kick off. So Notre Dame takes the kicking team off the field. They'll send the receiving team on the field. And that is Hatfield, who is teeing it up there now. Randy Harrison to be one of the deep men for Notre Dame. So Hatfield is tied up to shoe. Notre Dame deploys to receive. That is Harrison going deep. Back there with Stone. Jim Stone and Randy Harrison are the deep men on the kickoff return. Hatfield is teed it up on the 40 yard line and very shortly after some confusion about the choices resulting from the toss of the corn, we'll be able to get the Cotton Bowl game underway. Hatfield puts it up. Stone. Now Harrison. Harrison at the 10 yard line to the 15 to the 20, 25. Harrison to the 30, 35, 40. Randy Harrison to the 50, 45, 40, 35. And Randy Harrison goes out of bounds at the 34 yard line of Houston. Elvis Bradley, number 20, the junior from Longview, pushed him out. 
and Notre Dame has excellent field position on the opening kickoff. First down and 10 yards to go now for the Fighting Irish. Joe Montana is the quarterback. And that'll run the attack. He's 141 for 260, 54.2%, 10 touchdowns and nine interceptions. A 56-yard return by Randy Harrison. Evans is the tailback. Buchanan is the fullback, and he moved it to the 31-yard line as Steve Bradham, the linebacker, came in to make the tackle. Jerome Evans, the starting tailback, who rushed for 728 yards and averaged 4.1. There is the backfield, Montana. Well, that's not the one they started, but that is the one they'll have in there a good part of the day. Now, Matt Vegas Ferguson, the most valuable player in last year's Cotton Bowl, but they're starting the senior, Jerome Evans, who leads career yards rushing all-time leader for Notre Dame. Give it again to Jerome Evans. And he powers his way through. Almost to the 25-yard line as David Hodge, the junior from Clute, and Jose Taylor came in to make the tackle. Both had outstanding seasons for the Houston Cougars. As the Houston defensive line and the linebackers. A very quick secondary. Cook, Hatfield, Ebner, and Bradley. Joe Montana up the middle. And Mastak has it to the 15 to the 10. The freshman, Dean Mastak, goes to the five-yard line. Oh, what a great catch, Lindsay. He's a good target, 6'4 and a half, 225 pounds, and Montana's right on target. He split the backs, pro-type offense, goes back in the pocket. He's got his eye on the big tight end all the way. 28-yard pickup, first and goal at the six. No score, but the Irish are threatening here now in the first quarter. They've got Palace back in there at fullback. Jerome Evans is the tailback. Houlihan in motion across. Jerome Evans to the left side, but stacked up after a gain of a yard at the five. Darrell Wilkerson, along with Steve Bradham, in to make the tackle. Second down and goal to go. Notre Dame at the Houston five-yard line. I've been watching Steve Bradham, the junior out of Longview. He's very active in there, Lindsay, from his inside linebacker. Houston will be in the normal college defense of 5-2. Five, five defensive linemen and two inside linebackers. And they have to be quick, and they are. Second down, and goal to go at the five. Evans on the right set, Palace on the left. Motion across, that's Detmer. Palace, fullback Carrick, got a couple of yards to the three before David Hodge made the tackle. Third down and goal, Notre Dame at the Houston three-yard line. Houston won nine games, lost two this year. Notre Dame won eight, lost three. Notre Dame lost their first two and their last one. I tell you, it favors the team who has the win. There's a lot of wind blowing left to right of your screen. Notre Dame must put some points on the board when they have the win in the first quarter. Montana's rolling and looking and keeping, and Montana past the shoulder and touchdown, Notre Dame. Montana lowered the shoulder and got in for the touchdown. Watch Bowman here, number 74, the defensive end. He goes over and knocks and hits Montana right at the goal line. Let's see if he gets in. He's very close. Referee right there. He got over. And Montana goes in for Notre Dame's first score. There he is. A nice, clean cut young man. Nine plays, 66 yards, Lindsay. Took up three minutes and 41 seconds off that clock. Joe Yunus, who is from Dallas, Texas, will attempt a conversion. Chuck Mayle is disabled, and so Yunus is there. During the converting, Canaffle is holding for him. Canaffle puts it down and drops it. Canaffle tries to scramble for it. Mayo tries to get to it. Ball is still loose. The conversion is no good, and the play is ended. So the score is Notre Dame six and Houston nothing. And we have six minutes, 55 seconds left to play in the first quarter of the Cotton Bowl game here in Dallas, Texas. The green machine, they call it in South Bend. And now Notre Dame will be kicking off, and Steve Cicci has teed the ball up on the 40-yard line. He's a freshman from Fargo. And dropping back to receive it, Terry Elston, number seven, Linnell Fee, number 15. There is the scoring drive. Montana, by the way, is two for four, 54 yards so far. Cicci puts it up. Elston at the six-yard line. He's at the 10 at the 15. 
Barry Elston across the 20 and fumbles the ball at the 24 yard line. And Notre Dame has recovered. Notre Dame has recovered the fumble. Well, Elston on the special teams. He's a backup quarterback. He's trying to get over to the right side. He's got his two hands on the football here. He gets hit, coughs up the football. And I think it was Bob Crable, a linebacker, who got it back for ND. Crable was a late season ball hawk at Notre Dame, and apparently was on that one too to give it first and 10 Notre Dame at the Houston 25 yard line. You'll recall that the Houston Cougars were here year before last in the Cotton Bowl, and they scored 21 points quickly against the University of Maryland. Cici made the hit, by the way, on that return. Vegas Ferguson is in there, but he was fake to Ferguson, and the pass was incomplete. Chris Haynes down the left sideline, the intended receiver. Evans was in the fullback spot, and Ferguson the tailback in that set. Now they got the best two backs in there. Brindinger open again, Lindsay coming across. He dropped one earlier. He came back with the same play. It's wide open. I would be I would get guessing here Montana's going to keep that in mind. You'll see that play a couple more times today. Evans goes off, and Palace comes in at fullback now. Ferguson became the second Notre Dame man in history to rush for over 1,000 yards this year. 1,192, average 5.6. He's the tailback, 32, in the ballgame just now. Now Montana rolls and throws the screen left. Taken on the left side by Vegas Ferguson. Got inside the 20-yard line, down near the 16, as Fred Snell made the tackle. From the end zone, that's number 32, Vegas Ferguson. Play action, he'll set up the screen. A little half roll right, Lindsay. Screen back to the weak side. And a good block coming out by the guard. Vegas Ferguson makes a good cut, almost picks up the first down, a little short. Vegas Ferguson. Those all sorts of records at Notre Dame. 1,192 yards rushing on the year, Notre Dame record. This is Vegas Ferguson. He's got the first down with yards to spare. He's inside the 10 at the 8. First down and goal to go. Gerald Cook from the corner made the tackle for Houston along with Kenny Hatfield. Dan Devine along the sideline. Ball is near the seven yard line, first and goal. Cook and Hatfield Five minutes, 45 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Notre Dame is leading by a score of six to nothing. Detmer in motion across. Montana. Mastak could not hold on. The freshman Dean Mastak. Well, Montana got all the time in the world to throw the football. Finally picked out his tight end, was right on the numbers with it. Just dropped it. So it'll be second down and goal to go at the seven yard line. Here comes Jerome Heavens back into the ball game. Palace is coming back in. Buchanan is going out. Ferguson is going out. On the second down play, Montana brings him up in an eye, and the wing back to the right side is Detmer. Detmer in motion across. Quick pitch to Heavens from the tailback. Evans drives to the two-yard line, where it'll be third down and goal to go. Notre Dame at the Houston two. Six-yard pickup by Jerome Heavens, who runs from both the tailback and the fullback in the Notre Dame eye. This time, Heavens is in the eye, pitch around the right side. Pete Pallas in front of him blocking. I thought Heavens did a nice job, Lindsay, getting down to the two-yard line. He's hit here about the six by number 10, Gerald Cook. Heavens now 19 yards and six carries. Buchanan is coming to the ball game. He's a freshman from Plymouth, Indiana, and Pallas has gone out. Buchanan, touchdown, Notre Dame. Pete Buchanan, the freshman, 6'3", 220-pounder, drove in for the second Notre Dame touchdown of the day. From the end zone, let's watch Pete Buchanan hit in there with a lot of authority, Lindsay. The freshman, 225 pounds, known for his blocking around Notre Dame, but this time he goes off the right side, his third touchdown of the year. So we have a conversion attempt coming now for Notre Dame, and since they missed the first one, will they go for two here? Here Don't go away. I was going to say, Lindsay, don't go away, folks. Bill Yeoman gets his rear offense working. 
They can put some points on the board so quick, it's unbelievable. Notre Dame's going to try a two point conversion. Montana goes and looks. Goes incomplete into the end zone. Trying to get it to Houlihan, and so that conversion attempt fails as well, and the score remains Notre Dame 12, Houston nothing, with four minutes, 40 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Steve Cicci is kicking off for Notre Dame to Eddie Wright and Lonell Fee of Houston. The start of the season, Joe Eunice was doing the kicking for Notre Dame. He was not too effective, and Chuck Mayle took over, was very effective, injured in the Georgia Tech game. It's Wright. He's not going to run it out. Touchback. It'll be put in play first and 10 at the 20-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go, and Danny Davis is in there to run the attack. His running backs are Emmett King and Randy Love. Both gained over 1,000 yards. There they are. The receivers, Herring, Adams, Jagadis, and the offensive line. The key, the key to the Houston attack on the Vera offense is a lot of east-west running, whether or not they'll be able to cut on this slippery field. With the King, and Emmett King powers up to the 30-yard line before Bob Golick comes in to make the tackle. Gain of six will make it second down and four yards to go. Steve Heimkreider also on the tackle for Notre Dame. Here's the Notre Dame defense. Average Weston, Calhoun, and Hankard. Average about 250 pounds in that front four for the Irish. Second down play coming for the Houston Cougars, champions of the Southwest Conference. Love, and he moved it up to the 35-yard line. Heimkreider, again coming in on the tackle. They take a long look now at first down yardage. John Hankard also on the tackle. Two great running backs for Houston. King who gained 1,095 yards. There's the linebackers for Notre Dame. Heinkreider, Golick in the middle, All-American, and Bobby Leopold on the outside. Randy Love averaged five yards a carry. Emmett King averaged six yards a carry. They're sending Eric Heron to a far right. He had 23 catches. On a running room for King. Got a first and 10, it's up at the 48-yard line. Bobby Leopold finally brought him down, first and 10. A 13-yard pickup. Let's see if we can pick up the blocking on the left side. 66, Robert Jones, a sophomore from Tyler, Texas, takes care of the linebacker, and what a hole. Emmett King picks up 13 yards and another first down. Harold Clark is coming to the backfield now. There's Emmett King. First down. That's love, Garrett. And he got only a yard. Jay Case was the first man there. It's going to be second and nine at the 45-yard line. Now, the first defensive move for Notre Dame, when the handoff, you must stop that. The defensive tackle or the end just crashes down here and gets love. Davis, if he would have faked it to love that time and went on the outside and of course that's the option the quarterback has second down nine yards to go at the 45. That's it. And Davis still has it and he takes a loss of a yard back to the 44 where it'll be third and ten Jeff Weston and Jay Case win to make the tackle Garrett Jurgaitis and Hubert Miller are alternated in there at tight end bringing in the plays from coach Bill Yeoman see this kind of field Lindsay is definitely a disadvantage for Houston they've Average 400 yards offensively a game. And this Veer offense is an east-west offense with Davis sliding up and down the line of scrimmage, pitching to his back. So when you start throwing that football around, those backs have to cut. They're losing their balance. Davis still has it now, the pitch. And it goes out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Steve Heimkreider, as the defender. Let's go down to Frank Lieber on the sideline. Now on fourth down, Jay Wyatt is back to do the punting. He has averaged 39 yards per punt. Gets it off. Weimer is deep. Scramble is on down there about the 12, 13 yard line. Notre Dame got mixed up. They did, and hit a Notre Dame man, and Houston recovered. It hit a red jersey. It hit one of the Houston Cougars, and Notre Dame Thought it was a live football. They should have just spread out, Lindsay, and got away from it. 
It's going to be first and ten, Houston. Well, the rolling punt hit a Notre Dame man. Chuck Brown recovered the fumble for Houston, and Houston has it first down and ten yards to go at the 12 yard line. Danny Davis, the quarterback. That's Love carrying, and he gets inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. John Hankard there on the tackle for Notre Dame. Along with Steve Heimkreider. Dan Devine, the head coach of Notre Dame, has been warned, Lindsay, on the sidelines. If he comes on the field once more, it's a 15 yard penalty. Second down, seven yards to go. Now the pitch back to King, and Emmett King downs the ball at the 15 yard line for a loss of six. That's a perfect example right there, Lindsay. On a good field, they're going to execute these offensive plays much better. And it is very tough for a Veer type offense when you have counter action, when you have. That's Shasta Four, the Cougar. That's kept in an air conditioned cage on the campus of the University of Houston. Third down at 13 yards to go. Love has carried five times for 23 yards. Eric Herring goes far to the right side. Eddie Davis, full pivot, sets it up, throws it into the end zone. Touchdown for Houston. Taken there by Willis Adams. Willis Adams took it for the touchdown. From the end zone, we're going to see Danny Davis. Now, this wasn't a picture pass, but it was end over end, and Willis Adams was wide open in the end zone. The senior, his fifth touchdown of the year. There's Mr. Adams. He is playing in the East-West game next week, the one that you'll see right here on CBS. Kenny Hatfield is in there to attempt a conversion. Jay Wyatt holds for him, the punter. Wyatt puts it down, Hatfield boots it up, and it's good. So as they come back up the field, it is now Notre Dame 12, Houston 7, and we have 17 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Hatfield is a regular cornerback and handles the kicking duties. He's got it there lying flat on the tee. Sails the line, drives down, and it's fielded at the 36-yard line. Return only to the 31-yard line. And that was Belden, the fullback, who returned it. Tony Belden. Seven seconds remaining to be played in the quarter. The clock will start on the snap. And the tailback. It was Ferguson carrying, and he was really stacked up by David Hodge and Sam Proctor. Let's take a look at one of the best athletes on the field today, number 70, Leonard Mitchell. Now, he had inside responsibility. That was not his fault that the play went outside of him. We'll be back in a minute. Time has run out in the quarter. There's big number 70, Lindsey, six foot six, only a sophomore, 17 or 18 years old, and he plays basketball also. He's a backup center for Houston. Leonard Mitchell, and there's the pitch going to Jerome Evans, and he picks up at most a yard as he gets to the 37, David Le Hodge, and to make the tackle. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning here at the Cotton Bowl game as we start the second quarter. Notre Dame leads by a score of 12 to 7. Irish in possession, third down, four yards to go. They have it at their own 37. Boy, is he big. He's credited with two interceptions, both for touchdowns, a defensive tackle. Buchanan is coming to the Notre Dame backfield now, and Palace has gone out. Dan Devine's been shuttling him in and out. Heavens has carried seven times for 20 yards unofficially. Chris Haynes to a wide right, Hillahan to a wide left, running backs in an eye third and four for Notre Dame. Notre Dame move. Uh, penalty markers are down as Taylor was in to make the tackle on Ferguson. Let's check out the penalty. There's number 90, Jose Taylor, another sophomore. Illegal motion against Notre Dame. They'll decline, Notre Dame will have to punt. They do decline it, fourth down comes up. They lost a three on the play. That's, this is another small gentleman, six foot five, 265 pounds. Heavens gets clothesline, no gain. So now the punter is Joe Rustic. He averaged 38.2, his long was 66. Donnie Love is back there with Linnell Fee to receive the punt. Six 
same thing happened. Same thing this. happened to happen before. It's at the 40-yard line. And if it hit a Notre Dame man, would be killed there. Marked by the official at the 40-yard line where Houston will take over as the ball at the moment is resting at the 36. A 30-yard punt has given Houston the ball first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. Notre Dame's leading by a score of 12 to 7. Danny Davis brings the Cougars up. He still has it. Pitches to King. Emmett King across the 40. Penalty marker. Face mask. Bobby Leopold, Jim Brown, and Joe Rustic all there. Holding against Notre Dame. Defensive holding against Notre Dame. Picked up about seven on that outside option to the right side. So this is a big one, a 15-yarder in college football. And makes it first and 10, Houston at the Notre Dame 41. Danny Davis has been pretty successful here in the Cotton Bowl, right, Lindsay? He went to elementary school and literally only a stone's throw off the backside of the Cotton Bowl, and he's played here eight times undefeated as a quarterback. This is Love, and he fumbles the ball, and Notre Dame recovers at the 32-yard line. It's a day for turnovers. The cold weather, John Hanker, number 47, on the ball for Notre Dame. Oh, and a beautiful hole and a good pickup off the right side. They're just controlling the line of scrimmage offense for Houston. They can only keep their hands on the football. Randy Love coughs it up, and John Hankard has it for Notre Dame. Paul Harning, you played in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Now, you have days like this. What are the hazards on the extremely cold? Well, it's not as bad, Lindsay, playing on the natural turf on a day like this because you can get a little bit better footing. But this ice on top of this carpet is very slippery, and it's very cold. And you're right, boy, when your hands get cold, you have a tendency to cough up that football. It's looking at the 23-yard line. That's Vegas Ferguson carrying, but he is firmly in the grasp of David Hodge, number 42, the junior from Clute, All-Southwest Conference and All-American linebacker for the Cougars. Loss of a yard on the play, missed at second and 11 at the 22-yard line. Eight minutes, 58 seconds left in the half. Houlihan comes out to a wide left. Fumble, wow. fumble. Houston got the ball. The Cougars have it near the 20-yard line of Notre Dame. It's David Hodge on the football. Well, this is the second time today that Montana and Dave Huffman have had a problem on the exchange from the center to the quarterback and it is definitely because of the weather. Watch David Hodge react to the football. The big linebacker, the junior from Clute, has got it, and Houston is in business. They are really in business because Notre Dame is leading by a score of 12 to seven, but Houston has the ball first and 10 just outside the 21-yard line. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Danny Davis, the quarterback. And this one off to Love. Torn jersey and all, he goes to the 17-yard line. Jeff Weston from Rochester, New York, brought him down. It's interesting. You listen to the Notre Dame players and coaches. They said last year when we had to get ready for Texas, we were up. We were playing for the number one position in college football. And he said, really, we only had to stop one player, Earl Campbell. He said, getting ready for Houston, much more difficult with the Bear. They've got more skilled athletes, and they are great. Eddie Davis with the pitch. King has it inside the 10-5, down to the three-yard line, and maybe the two. Pete Johnson finally made the stop. It is marked at the three yard line, first down and goal to go. One thing about the Bear, Lindsay, it doesn't matter what defense the other team is in. Here's the fake over the middle, reverse option. King has got it, now watch him turn it on. 14 yard pickup, first down, and they only need about four for the touch. First down and goal to go at the three yard line. Seven minutes, 41 seconds left in the half. Davis rolling and looking and throwing, and it's incomplete. It was Jurgaitis in the end zone. Joe Rustic covering defensively. Just a little bit easier, and that would have been six. That is the big tight end. 6'5, 230. Ball City, Texas. 
Second down and goal to go. Houston at the Notre Dame three yard line as Hubert Miller, the sophomore from Fort Worth, brings in the next play. Davis is one for three, 15 yards in the air, but that was the big one. One time worked in the Cotton Bowl as a peanut salesman when he was a youngster going to elementary school within the shadow of the Cotton Bowl. Davis has got the ball, but Davis cannot advance. It was Jay Case who was hanging on to him, and it's going to be third down and goal still at the three yard line. So the big third down play comes now for the Houston Cougars. Gergaitis is bringing in the next play. King in love with the setbacks for that man, Danny Davis. King down to the two yard line. It'll be fourth down coming up, and it's goal to go. Pete Johnson makes a stop on the inside. Listen, third and eight is not necessarily a passing situation for Houston out of the beer. Look at that hole up front. And Pete Johnson right here makes a good stop. I think that was Jim Browner up from his safety position. I think it Love touchdown. Love took it in for the touchdown. By quickness of Randy Love, he scored nine touchdowns on the year. Just straight ahead, Lindsey. From the end zone, just a handoff right over his right tackle. He veers to the outside, and his momentum gets him into the end zone. Houston takes the lead. The Cougars are leading it now 13 to 12, and they have a conversion attempt coming, and they have Kenny Hatfield in that about it. Randy Love, who took it in. Senior from Garland. The punter, Jay Wyatt, holds. Hatfield boots, and it's good. And so now the score is the Houston Cougars 14 and Notre Dame 12 with six minutes, 27 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. That field will kick off here now. Stone is back there deep along with Randy Harris to receive it for Notre Dame. Rams didn't look too shabby yesterday on CBS. Harrison's waiting. He's got a two yards deep in the end zone. Goal line five and out to the 10. Harrison to the 15, stacked up at the 16 yard line and struggle to the 17 where they'll start first and 10. Third and long. Hangings in the wide right, Hulahan left. Von Kata rolling. Goes to Hulahan and it is intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Hatfield. Hatfield is returning and he's across the 40, 35 to 30. Kenny Hatfield goes out of bounds at the 25 yard line. First and 10, Houston at the Notre Dame 25 on Kenny Hatfield's interception. There's Montana. He's trying to come up with the play, Lindsay, to get him out of that territory, a big first down, but what a defensive interception by Kenny Hatfield. Good hands, and Hatfield keeps his balance on a good return, a 25-yard return. He's out of bounds. Hatfield is also the placement kicker, in addition to being a cornerback. First down, 10 yards to go. Danny Davis brings them up. That is Love carrying. Randy Love popped it to the 17 before Mike Calhoun and Bobby Leopold brought him down. Gain of eight yards on the play, second and two. Houston at the Notre Dame 17 yard line, and Houston is leading by a score of 14 to 12. This is King. First and 10. At the 10, Tom Gibbons made the tackle for Notre Dame. <laughs> All during the first half, look at the wide splits for that Houston Bear, and look at the hole, Lindsey. Even though he almost gets tackled by Calhoun, the splits of the offensive line of Houston, the blocking up front, there's huge gaping holes for those two backs to run into, especially from tackle to tackle. They've got Adams in the wide left, your guide us in the slot. Love got the football, and he lost a yard. Closed it. Second and 11 at the 11-yard line. John Hankard, and to make the tackle along with Jeff Weston. Hubert Miller brings in the next play. 
John Newhouse comes in now at a running back also for Houston. They very possibly could get a first down, but they got to move the football to about the six inch line to get a first down. It's possible, but not likely. Davis has the ball. Davis drove inside the five yard line to the four. A case there on the tackle. Now, this is an excellent decision on the part of Danny Davis here. It looks like he's not going to gain maybe one or two yards, but he just waits and picks his spot. He goes inside and on that field he slides an extra three or four yards. He got it inside the five. It's resting at the four yard line. Third down coming, third and four at the four. Houston leading 14 to 12 and driving with three minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the half. Davis, Davis still alive. Throws it up into the end zone and throws it away. It's incomplete. Fourth and four at the four yard line. Wise decision. Hatfield's coming in, he's the field goal man. He threw it away on purpose, Lindsay. There wasn't anybody in the vicinity of that pass, Danny Davis didn't want to be sacked for that 10 or 12 yard loss. And field goals this year, Hatfield was two for four. Well, they scored so many touchdowns, it didn't matter. 44 touchdowns in 11 game season. This will be a 21 yard attempt with Wyatt holding for Hatfield from the hash mark right. The 21 yarder is good. And the score is Houston 17. Notre Dame 12. And we have exactly three minutes remaining to be played in the first half of the 43rd annual Cotton Bowl game here in Dallas, Texas. Hatfield kicks it up. It's over to Harrison's side of the field, and he's got it at the 9. To the 10, to the 15, to the 20, Harrison to the 21-yard line. First and 10, short of the 37-yard line. Montana. Cannot hold on, it's incomplete. Now, Notre Dame's tight ends having trouble this afternoon holding on to the football. I think that's about the fifth time a tight end has dropped the football. It would have been a good catch, Lindsay. But as I said, the cold, that's the first thing that people worry about in a game like this is their hands. It will be second down coming now with 10 yards to go at the 37. Houston's leading by a score of 17 to 12. Montana intercepted at the 45 yard line and returned by Bradham, Steve Bradham intercepted it. Flags down. Bradham's been all over the field here in the first half, probably holding against Notre Dame. That would seem to be the indication that it is. Holding against Notre Dame decline because Houston wants the ball and the Cougars get it. First and 10, they get it at their own 44 on the interception by Bradham. That was a poor pass end over end by Joe Montana. And of course, the weather has really affected his throwing. They thought they'd be able to exploit uh, Houston secondary, Lindsay. They were rated the, uh, the last in the conference pass on pass defense. But so far, Montana's had problems. Of course, they explained that record on pass defense by saying that their defense closed off the running attack of the opposition, and if they gained, they had to gain in the air. They try the throw here to Love. Randy Love across the 50, and he is at the 45-yard line of Notre Dame. Tom Gibbons upset him there. Great move here, just a little draw. Randy Love just picks up the first down on his own. He breaks a tackle here. Going forward, he got the extra yard, first down. Inside the 46-yard line of Notre Dame. Clock is running, and we have 50 seconds remaining to be played. Keep in mind that during the halftime intermission, you'll see the Notre Dame band and the Houston band and the Kilgore Rangerettes. Well, he throws that in a way to stop the clock. And it stops it with 16 seconds remaining in the half, and it'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Houston at the Notre Dame 33-yard line. Andy Davis looking over to the sideline, and here comes Hubert Miller in with the play for him. He's in the messenger tight end. Well, 
Willis Adams is out into a wide left. Eric Herring's in a wide right. Herring at the 21 yard line. Pull him out of bounds at the 17. Stops the clock with nine seconds remaining. Dave Waymer on the tackle, along with Browner. That'll bring the field goal unit on. 17 yard pickup. And Davis, the good release that time, Lindsay, right on target on the sideline, picked up 16 yards and definitely has them uh, for Kenny Hadfield field goal attempt. 34 yard attempt. Wyatt puts it down, Hatfield's kick is up, and the 34-yarder is good. It skimmed the board. It just board. got over. It just got over, but it made it. Three seconds on the clock. A 34-yard field goal is good, and Houston leads now by a score of 20 to 12. Time has run out in the half, and Houston is leading at the halftime in a mission by a score of 20 to 12 over Notre Dame. A victory for Houston over Notre Dame would be of considerable importance to them for years. Houston struggled as an independent trying to get named teams on their schedule. And a victory over Notre Dame would be a considerable feather in their cap. Let's go down now to Frank Lieber. Bill Yeoman is here with me, and you guys are playing like it's 75 degrees. Well, no, it's not 75 degrees. The kids have played, come back after those first two mistakes there early and have played pretty well. I'll tell you what, though. That gum Notre Dame now, they've dropped some pass and thing like that. I'll tell you, they're playing real tough. We better be ready for a full foot, full football game. But you haven't lost your cool at all after that 12 oh, points against how you. How can you lose your cool on a day like this, <laughs> for crying out loud? No, there's no sense in getting stirred up. Heck, you're going to play as well as you can play, and if it doesn't work out, that's the way it goes. The wind, obviously, is a big factor, though. You did score wind points is, against it. Yeah, wind's getting to be a little bit of a problem, and i got a sneaking suspicion they cool off here and really get bad. Montana, a little trouble throwing the ball. You're defensing him that well. Is the wind against him in that second Well, period? no, I'll tell you, I think Joe's throwing the ball pretty doggone well. We got him the one and maybe two, but uh, he's throwing the ball pretty well. I think our linebackers are playing better. I think our secondary is playing better. I'll tell you, we lost our concentration late in the year in our linebacker and defensive end, and they're playing better right now. You surprised you're running the ball as well as you are? Oh, no. No, we we run it all year, and, and we feel if we can execute, we can run the ball on down anybody. But, you know, like, they may not, they may step in our ear this next one. <laughs> well, it was cold here a couple of years ago, but not quite like this, huh? No, you're right. You're right. It's good and fresh. Okay, thank you very much, Bill. Good okay. luck to you in the second half. Bill Yeoman, the head coach of the Houston Cougars here at halftime, where the Cougars lead Notre Dame by a score of 20 to 12. Back with halftime activities in just a moment. So now each team goes into its final huddle preparatory to the start of the second half, and for Notre Dame, they will receive as Weimer is dropping back there along with Stone. And Hatfield is teeing it up. Kenny Hatfield will kick it off for Coach Bill Yeomans, Houston Cougars. Houston is leading by a score of 20 to 12. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Lights have been on since before the opening kickoff. Waymer retreats. He will not run it out. Touchback. First and 10 at the 20 yard line as Notre Dame takes over in Notre Dame territory. And Joe Montana, the senior from Monongahela, Pennsylvania, comes out to run the attack for the Irish. He's got Vegas Ferguson in there, along with Jerome Heavens at the running backs as we start the second half. Tim Cagle. Tim Cagle just came into that huddle. Tim Cagle is the quarterback. It's not Montana. It is the sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, Tim Cagle, who is starting at quarterback for Notre Dame here in the second half. That's a surprise. Gave it to Evans, and he was stacked up. Loss of a yard back to the 19-yard line, which will make it Second down and 11 yards to go. Uh, Tim Cagle was one of the most sought after high school football players in the nature, nation out of Cincinnati. Didn't see too much action this year. Four out of eight is his stats throwing the football. We're going to try to get a report on Montana. I don't think he was hurt. There was no apparent injury to Montana, but it is a great surprise that Tim Cagle has come out here as the starting quarterback in the second half. Cagle with the pitch now to Vegas Ferguson. And Ferguson 
pulled down by the Cougar defense. It's a dogged defense, and it's at the 20 yard line. Evansberger, Grady Evansberger, the senior from Van Alstein, made the tackle. Third down and 10 yards to go at the 20 yard line. Leonard Mitchell coming in defensively for Houston. Willahan comes out to a wide left. Chris Haynes in a wide right for quarterback Tim Cagle. It's a tough position, number one. Let's see. Overthrows Haynes incomplete. That'll bring on the punting unit for Notre Dame. Well, we've got a report. Dan Devine, the Montana's not hurt. He's just decided to go with Timmy Cagle. It is surprising in that throughout his career, Joe Montana has been the come from behind quarterback for Notre Dame. He was the man who sparkled in the come from behind effort at Southern Cal. Bushka is in there to flanker. I beg your pardon, as a punter. Bushka is in there to do the punting. You'll recall it, Restick was injured. So Bushka partially, has it partially blocked. blocked. Up to the 33 yard line, there will be no run back, and it's rolling now across the 40. And out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Houston with the ball in Notre Dame territory. Bushka the punter as Joe Restick was injured in the first half. Adams is far to the left side. Davis with a pitch. King is coming back, drops the ball. King simply takes it on a dribble and is down at the 48 yard line for a loss of 10. As Dave Weimer made the stop, it'll be second and 20 back at the 48. Just keep it bouncing in front of you, and you're all right. Very lucky bounce that time. Came right back up into his hands. This Cotton Bowl game was a sellout, but as you see when our camera swings by the stands, a great many people, thousands of them, elected to stay in the warmth of their living rooms and watch the Cotton Bowl game on television rather than come out and watch this game in conditions that have been less than ideal. That's love carrying, and he gets to the 45-yard line before Jay Case makes the tackle. In a three to make it third and 17. At game time, the wind chill factor was sub zero. Temperature was around 17 degrees Fahrenheit. But there was about a 25 mile an hour wind blowing also. And as Bill Yeoman pointed out, it uh, hasn't gotten any warmer during the course of the afternoon. Completed pass. 25 yard line taken there by Willis Adams and it's a first and 10 at the 25 Randy Harrison made the tackle Adams who caught a first half touchdown pass from Danny Davis Davis back his third completion of the afternoon he really guns it 20 yard pickup right over the middle he's wide open in the Notre Dame zone Randy Harrison on the stop so the Houston Cougars are leading 20 to 12 there's Willis Adams 6'2", 189 pounder, fine pass receiver. Average per catch is over 18 yards. Davis has it, and he pumps it complete to Eric Herring. Herring's first catch of the day. Jay Case made the tackle. It's just outside the 15 yard line. The tackle made by Case. It'll be second down at about a yard to go, spotted inside the 16. The Houston Cougars leading and driving. They send Adams to the left side, Herring to the right side, Love's in the right set, King's in the left set for Danny Davis. That's King. Emmett King drives to the 13. It's a first and 10. Jay Case made the tackle for Notre Dame. Along with Steve Heimkrater. Completely in control. Now here comes Hubert Miller in with the next play. Davis starting to mix it up a little bit more, Lindsay, here in the second half, throwing the football a couple of times, completing both these attempts. Emmett King. Emmett King popped as he got across the 15 by Joe Gramke. One thing DeVere does now, Danny Davis, as he handed off to Emmett King, you saw the Notre Dame defense collapse. And he might be just licking his chops because of that, Lindsay. Next time, he's just going to fake it to King, and they're going to get outside with some running room. Second and 10 at the 13-yard line. 
And they send Adams to the left side and Herring right. Now, Davis keeps. Davis is at the five, and he is out of bounds at the two-yard line. Great balance. Jim Browner bounced him out. There's a missed tackle back here, but it's the quick feet of Danny Davis. Here he is, fakes it inside. You see they tackled the handoff man. Now Davis does the rest on his own. He broke a tackle from Heim Kreider and Randy Harrison. Got it inside the three. First down and goal to go at the two-yard line now for the Houston Cougars. Six minutes, 44 seconds left in the third quarter. Herring's going wide to the left side. Davis, touchdown. Danny Davis accompanied himself. Bringing in for the touchdown for the Houston Cougars. Well, they got, they've got Notre Dame's defense just guessing now. You really better not guess against a beer or you're going to really get hurt. This time he fakes it and ducks back inside the handoff spot easily for the score. So it's now 26-12, Danny Davis there, the quarterback, and a good one. Conversion attempt is coming, and Hatfield is coming in to do the booting. Jay Wyatt will hold for him. Conversion attempt is good. And as they come back up the field, the score is Houston 27, Notre Dame 12, 6 minutes, 29 seconds left to play in the third quarter. <laughs> well, the cold is not bothering that particular section. Call me Ray. That's the gentleman I think that performs in all the Dallas Cowboy games. And the ball is teed up on the 40-yard line for Hatfield to kick it off. He's got Stone back there with Waymer to receive it for Notre Dame. Fouled over to Waymer's side of the field. He's got it at the goal line five. Waymer to the 10, turns it on to the 15, changes pace to the 20, and is stopped at the 22. So Notre Dame will get it first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Joe Montana apparently has fallen victim to the elements in the first half. Reported during the halftime in a mission by the team position that he has chills, slight temperature, and so Montana has not come out, and Jim Cagle is running the attack first and 10 at the 22 for Notre Dame. Houston defense once again. You've got to start throwing the football, Lindsay, on first and second down. This will not work. In there to get to Vegas Ferguson, who's getting up a little slowly. And if you don't think field position has helped Houston, they went 12 yards for a touchdown, 21 yards for a touchdown, 38 yards for a touchdown. They started, uh, they went 21 yards for a field goal and 39 yards for a field goal. So they started with field position inside the 40 every time they put points on the board. Illegal motion against Notre Dame, decline, second and 13 at the 19-yard line. Tim Cagle. Incomplete. So it'll be third and 13 at the 19-yard line. And completion stops the clock with 6-11 remaining in the third quarter. There's Joe Montana now. Joe Montana warming up along the sidelines. Kago. Going long. The nice stack and it is incomplete. He threw it right into the coverage. Exactly what Houston wanted him to do. He was not only double covered, Lindsay, there were four red jerseys around Mastiff. Montana continues to throw. Fourth down has come up, and the punter has come on now. Bushka standing at his own five-yard line. Dick Bushka. Von Fee is dropped back to field it for Houston. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for the Houston Cougars. Oh, and they block it again. They block it. Houston has the ball. And it's near the 20-yard line, inside the 20. 
great rush by the Houston Cougars here. They had 10 men rushing the kicker. They know he's kicking against the wind. Buska gets it blocked. Number 34 of Houston. Mr. Harrison, one of the linebackers. So once again, Houston starts just with great field position inside Notre Dame's 20. Bobby Harrison blocked it. First and 10 for the Cougars at the Notre Dame 19 yard line. Houston leading by a score of 27 to 12 and in good field position here once again in the third quarter. Davis has the ball. Keeps it. 15, 10. Continues to drive for the seven yard line. Pete Johnson brought him down. First down and goal to go. Houston at the Notre Dame seven. Now last year they controlled the wishbone offense. The great running of Earl Campbell, but they just haven't been able to even come close to the mirror. Davis picks up 12 yards here. Got about 200 yards rushing now. Gilbert Miller, number 82, brought in the next play. That's Love. It's inside the five yard line. It'll be second out and goal there. Jay Case made the tackle. Case is from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's a senior. Jeff Weston, the senior from Rochester, New York. Also there, plays just alongside him. Now right, here comes Jurgaitis in with the next play. They alternate tight ends, bringing in plays from Coach Bill Yeoman. Second on goal to go. Houston at the Notre Dame five yard line. Davis has got it, and it's a touchdown. Davis took it in at the plan. Well, Houston's giving Notre Dame a lesson to the rear. Look at him, he's happy. Davis trying to go 9-0 and in the cock ball as a quarterback. Beautiful fake inside. Now, this is what I was talking about. When Notre Dame closes it up, the handoff, Davis is going to take it outside, and he goes in unmolested. That's his second touchdown of the day. He's also thrown for one touchdown. So it's 33-12 to in a conversion attempt coming. And again, it's Hatfield. Back up the field this time. The score is Houston 34 and Notre Dame 12. The Hoogers are running it up. Kicking off is Hatfield. Waymer goes deep. Goes out of the end zone. It's a touchback. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. One minute 41 seconds left in the third quarter as Joe Montana sprints onto the field to run the attack. Fullahan out in the wide left. Chris Haynes in the wide right. As Heavens with one in room and across the 40 to the 45 and across the 50 and on into Houston territory. Jerome Heavens at the 47 yard line is dropped by Kenny Hatfield. This is the first first down of the second half for Notre Dame, just right up the middle, trap blocking. Jerome Heavens goes for 26. Got into secondary. And he got into Houston territory. Been a long time since that happened, maybe since the first quarter. Evans now has gone off the field. Buchanan has replaced him at fullback. Montana rolls and keeps. Saw some daylight and wanted to go, but could not quite get through. He was pulled down after a gain of two by Theodos Williams. Second down and eight yards to go for Notre Dame. We have less than a minute remaining in the third quarter, as you see Shasta. Evans has carried 14 times for 70 yards here this afternoon. Saints to the right side, Pete Lillahan to the left side. Short drop. Montana now going to Chris Haynes, and it is intercepted at the 12 yard line. It is Cook, I think. That's the third interception today for Joe Montana. Elvis Bradley, a junior from Longview, Texas. You see Montana a little trouble. He went to his right. And over and right in the arms of Elvis Bradley, intended for Chris Haynes. 
Well, they spotted just outside the 11 on Bradley's interception, and it's first and 10 for Houston with 32 seconds remaining in the third quarter. There's Elvis Bradley. That's the only way to keep warm on an afternoon like this. Love. At the 12 yard line, it'll be second down and nine. I'm Kreider and Weston made the tackle. Clock is running, wound down to 14 seconds. It may be played in the quarter. And now down to eight seconds. We may be played in this period as Hubert Miller brings in the next play. They will not get off another play. Two seconds, one second, and that's that. That's the end of the third quarter with the score, Houston 34, Notre Dame 12. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. One quarter to go, and Houston is leading Notre Dame by a score of 34 to 12. Houston has the ball second down, nine yards to go. They have it at their own 12-yard line. Danny Davis has quarterback the Cougars throughout. He's been over in conference with his head coach, Bill Yeoman, and he's joining the huddle just there. Willis Adams out to a wide left. Danny Davis keeps it and slips on the cut. Lee Johnson was there. He wanted to fall off inside, but uh, Pudding is a little wary this afternoon. Gain of a yard on the play will make it third down and eight at the 13. The director of athletics at Notre Dame, of course, is Ed Moose Krause, and the director of athletics at Houston is Harry Falk. He's the only director of athletics they've had. Third and eight at the 13. Over and back, no contact. Danny Davis back to the 12 as Mike Calhoun is hanging on to him. It'll be third down and nine at the 12-yard line. Jay Case also on the tackle. So it's a punting circumstance here. Jay Wyatt comes in to do the punting. Now let's see what Mr. Wyatt can do against the wind. Notre Dame Weimer. probably go after the kicker. Well, that one is blocked. Notre Dame gets the football. That ball can be advanced. And it's being advanced right into the end zone. And it is taken in there for a touchdown. It was Cicci, Steve Cicci. Steve Cicci, you can, a, you can advance a block punt if it's caught in the air. Uh, so Notre Dame has its first touchdown since the first quarter. Here's the punt block right here. Watch Steve Cicci comes up, catches it on the fly, and then breaks loose out of a few tackles and goes in for the first touchdown since the first quarter for Notre Dame. Conversion attempt coming now for the Irish. Seven minutes, 25 seconds remaining to be played in this ball game. They're gonna go for two. Right now it's 34 to 18 with the conversion attempt coming and rolling is Montana and he throws and it's gathered in for two points. Taken in the end zone for two points by Vegas Ferguson. And so the score is Houston 34, Notre Dame 20. Steve Cicci, who ran the block punt in for the touchdown for Notre Dame, a freshman from Fargo will kick off and dropping back Eddie Wright and Lonell Fee to receive it for Houston. Fee at the 11-yard line to the 15, Fee to the 20, and he is stopped at the 24-yard line where Houston gets the ball first down, 10 yards to go at their own 24. Yep, two series ago, if Notre Dame could have put some points on the board, this might have turned into an interesting uh, last five or six minutes. They had a first. 10 on the 11-yard line. Brown still has it at the 30-yard line. Ham Carter hanging on to him. Chuck Brown there. It is second and four for Houston. They have the ball at the 30. You guess that he's a weightlifter. 
That's love, Gary, and he gets it to the 33-yard line. Mike Calhoun made the tackle. It's a little short of first down yard. It's going to be third and about one. Heimkreider was there also. About two yards to go, third and about two as they spot it. Delrick Brown brings the figures up. King. A little short. He is a little short. It'll be fourth down, about a yard to go. Here's a final score. Alabama has defeated Penn State by a final score of 14 to 7. Running in, it's coming on, and Jay Wyatt will do the kicking. That's Waymer dropping back for Notre Dame. Well, that's some kind of snap. He got it off. Hits at the 45. Rolls inside the 40-yard line. Call it 39, first and 10. A 26-yard punt. Five minutes, 37 minutes, seconds left to play here. Montana. On the money this time. Completes it. Inside the 45-yard line to Dean Mastak, the freshman tight end. First down and 10 yards to go. Elvis Bradley made the tackle. 16-yard pickup. Notre Dame trying desperately to get one, go for two, and come back with the onside kick. Dean Mastic, the big freshman, 6'4", 230. It's Jerome Heaven going to go into a left set. Montana going to Heavens. He's got it. Evans is out of bounds at the 14-yard line, where it's another first and 10 for Notre Dame. Now yeah, Montana's getting hot. He's called the comeback kid. He's done this before down the sidelines. Jerome Evans makes a good over-the-shoulder catch, and he's out of bounds. 30-yard pickup on the pass. Notre Dame first and 10. Houston's leading 34 to 20 in this game. Montana throws on the run, incomplete, trying yes. to get it to Houlihan. There's a penalty marker throw at the two yard line. Montana rolling out right, trying to get it to Houlihan on the square out pattern, Lindsay. It was Gerald Cook, number 10. Right here, Cook comes over the body. Interference call makes it first down and goal to go. Notre Dame at the two yard line. Well, they get it for a touchdown. It's thinking back again, reiterating that thought that Notre Dame had it at the football first and 10 on about the 11 yard line. They didn't get a point. They spotted it on the three yard line. Hail back and he's stacked up about the two. It'll be second down and go to <laughs> Vegas Ferguson carried Kenny Hatfield and Sam Proctor came to make the stop. Dan Devine walked across the way. Now they should get in and out of the huddle as quickly as possible, Lizzie. This is what sometimes befuddles me about football teams. They take almost 20 or 30 seconds. You should call your play and get up to the line of scrimmage as quickly as possible. Goal to go. Evans. Stopped outside the one by David Hodge, the linebacker. It'll be third down and goal to go. Notre Dame wants timeout. They do. Notre Dame wants to talk it over. So they stop the clock with four minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the game. And Houston is leading by a score of 34 to 20. When play is resumed, Notre Dame has the ball third down and goal to go outside the one yard line. That's Joe Montana bringing the Irish up third down and goal to go inside the two-yard line of Houston. Montana's rolling. He's going to try to take it in, and he's got it. Touchdown, Montana. Notre Dame is on the board. Joe's still down. He really made a great determination, Lindsay, to get over the end zone. Montana on a rollout left. Option runner pass right here. You see the receivers trying to maneuver free in the end zone. Montana makes his mind up right here to get it into the end zone, and he does. 
So don't go away. This could be quite a finish. 34 to 26. There's Joe Montana. Notre Dame has just had a huddle along the sideline to determine what they're going to do now with a conversion attempt coming. Well, they come back this far. They got to go for two. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go for two. There's eight points differential right now. Montana's the quarterback. Rolls, and he's going to try to get to the flag. Now throws, and it's good for two points. He hit Haynes. He found Chris Haynes, his favorite pass receiver, and gunned it right in there. So Notre Dame picked up two on the conversion to score. It's Houston 34, Notre Dame 28. Four minutes, 15 seconds left to play. Ball, Steve Cicci seeing the ball up. Well, Houston is up there expecting an onside kickoff, Lindsay, but there's plenty of time left, four minutes and 15 seconds. And I think the best thing to do, if CG can get a hold of it, if he kicks it in the end zone, of course, he's not a long kicker. They're, they miss Chuck Mayo in this position right here. There's plenty of time. I think the most important thing, since they've blocked the last two punts, is to keep Houston deep in their own territory. Gonna let Belden hold it for him now. An indication, I should think, that he's gonna try to get it far downfield. Here comes Steve Cicci. And it is a touchback taken in the end zone by Eddie Wright. It'll be brought out and put in play by Houston first and 10. They have the ball at their own 20 yard line. First and 18 at the 12 yard line for the Cougars. Manny Davis brings them up. Rolls to the right side. Davis gonna run it. Slips down. At the 18-yard line, he picked up six. It'll be second down and 12. He also stayed in bounds, Lindsay. That clock, as you see in the inset, is still running. Wimmer and Pete Johnson were there. And the clock runs on with Houston leading 34 to 28. Need a couple of first downs, and Houston will have won their second cup bowl in only two appearances. And Danny Davis at the controls of both wins, but Notre Dame here needs the football. Davis going to a high count. Gives it to King. King struggles out to the 23-yard line where Steve Heimkreider and Mike Calhoun close him off again to five yards will make it third and seven. And here comes Hubert Miller in with the next play for the Cougars from Bill Yeoman. We have two minutes, 59 seconds left to play in this game. The Fighting Irish want the football. Houston wants to hold on to it, pick up the first down if they possibly can, and then run it out. They're leading by a score of 34 to 28. And divide along the sideline. Third down and seven yards to go. Andy Davis. Incomplete. Incomplete. Tried to get it to Willis Adams. Dave Wehmer covered, and that'll make it a fourth down. Adams had it momentarily, but that young man, number 34, Dave Wehmer, broke it up. So and now Houston has to give it up as the punting unit comes in. They blocked the last two punts. Trying to block the punt, and if it's a high punt, if it gets it Rolls off. it back. The center rolled it back. Ball hits up at the 40 to the 45. Takes a Houston bounce to the 50. Wehmer dives on it at the 49-yard line of Houston. Notre Dame gets the ball in Houston territory. First and 10, a 28-yard punt. Very touchy. Wehmer falling on that football. If he didn't get it, it would have been ruled a fumble. 26-yard punt. Got a good roll. So now, Notre Dame trails by six points. Two minutes, 25 seconds remain to be played in the game. The Irish with the ball first and 10 at the Houston 49-yard line. Joe Montana was a sophomore. This happened four times. He brought Notre Dame back. Turn out, and it's complete to Haynes. Chris Haynes simply moves it to the 43-yard line. Picked up six on the play, it'll be second and four. Tommy Ebner was there on the tackle for Houston. There's little doubt that the wind has been a big factor in this game. It has been the team that has had the wind at its advantage that has done best in this football game here this afternoon. There's only been one touchdown scored against the wind, and that was because of a turnover in Notre Dame early in the first half. Second down and four yards to go. Montana, penalty marker is dropped at the line of scrimmage. 
Montana knocked off his feet at the 50-yard line, but there's a marker. Got a preliminary signal here. Illegal motion against Notre Dame. Decline. Loss of seven on the play. Got two downs to pick up 11 yards. Third and 11. Buchanan is brought in the next play. Montana brings them up. Montana. And it is complete. Taken by Hullahan. And that's enough for the first down, Lindsay. It's a first first 11. First down and 10 yards to go, and it is near the 36-yard line. Nice concentration by the freshman, Pete Houlihan. 6'4", 215 pounds. It's going to be a great one before he's finished. A 14-yard pickup on the sideline pattern. Right there, Houlihan's got it, steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Houlihan is a sophomore from Liverpool, New York. Here's a first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Montana. Montana's going to run it. He's at the 30-yard line. Drops the ball. The scramble is on. And Houston got the ball. Montana had the first down, Lindsay, trying to run the football. He got hit from the blind side. He hit his arm. He dropped the football. Let's take a look. Here it is. He wants to throw the football. Right up the middle is a gaping hole. Now watch, he's got the football in one hand and he gets hit there. He didn't get hit too hard, but on the right elbow and he coughs up the football. Tommy Ebner came out of the stack with the football when it was finally unstacked and it is first and 10 now at the 20 yard line for Houston. One minute, 50 seconds left to play. The seventh turnover for Notre Dame, four interceptions and three fumbles. First and 10 for Houston. Well, they try love, and he has stopped at the 18-yard line for a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12 yards to go. Gramke, along with Pete Johnson, made the stop. Bob Golick was injured in the first half of this ball game, and now we get a timeout signal. And it is timeout Notre Dame to stop the clock with one minute, 38 seconds left to play in the game. <laughs> King tries it. Heim Kreider and Case there on the tackle. Spotted at the 16-yard line. Loss of two will make it third down and 14. And they'll have a chance to block the punt, Lindsay. We want to thank the People from Notre Dame, President Theodore M. Hesberg, Executive Vice President Reverend Edmund P. Joyce, the Director of Athletics, Moose Krauss, the Sports Information Director, Roger Valdeseri, Head Coach Dan Devine and his staff. Rolling is Davis. Gets it out there to the 24-yard line. We have 45 seconds left to play in this game as Notre Dame calls another timeout. I'm Kreider on the tackle. <coughs> Notre Dame has stopped the clock. Our thanks to all for making our stay in Dallas, Texas at this Cotton Bowl game so very pleasant. Now, back in deep punt formation. Goes Jay Wyatt. Weimer is deep for Notre Dame, standing at the 50-yard line. 46 seconds left to play in the game. Houston's leading 34 to 28. The snap. Got it off under a heavy rice. Notre Dame was offside. It is rolling along the 45-yard line of Houston. Penalty markers are down. Offsides against Notre Dame. Well, they're going to mark off the penalty here now. And they're going to send Danny Davis back out there. It's going to be fourth down and about a foot to go, and they're going to go for it, I think. They're afraid of getting the punt block or a bad snap from center. 35 seconds on the clock. 35 seconds. It is fourth down and about a foot to go. Houston has the ball at the 29-yard line. And they're going to go for it as Danny Davis comes out there. 
Houston is leading 34 to 28. 35 seconds left to play in the Cotton Bowl game. I don't think he got it. I don't think he did either. King uh, took the handoff and hit in there. The Notre Dame players don't think he did, but uh, they're not the officials, so they'll spot the ball and then take the look. It's Notre short. Dame takes the ball on downs. It's at the 29-yard line of Houston. Well, the Irish come up there. They have no timeouts remaining. They are up there ready to go as soon as the ball is marked, ready for play, and then the clock will start. 28 seconds left to play in the game. Houston leading 34 to 28. That's a margin of six points. Montana. 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 Well, he'll have to get it to the sidelines, and he goes across the sideline marker, but the spot is being marked up there at the 18. It is a first down for Notre Dame. And that'll stop the clock, Lindsay. In college football, the first clock down, does stop. stop. Right. 15 seconds. Notre Dame is ready to go first and 10 at the 18-yard line. Montana pops this one, and it's Chris Haynes shouldering inside the 10-yard line and down to the 8. What a finish. What a finish at the Cotton Bowl. The clock says six seconds left to play in the game. First down for Notre Dame, and goal to go at the Houston eight-yard line. This should be it, Lindsay. Time for one play, and if they're very lucky on a very quick release, they might get two, but I doubt it very much. Houston called the timeout. Houston called the timeout, and now Montana goes over to talk to Dan Devine. Montana, who played the first half, then did not come out after the halftime intermission, and the report from the team position was that he had become chilled and was running a slight temperature because of the weather conditions. Then came out to relieve Tim Cagle, who had relieved him, and Montana has sparked the surge of Notre Dame here in the closing moments. Houston, a stout defense during the season and a stout defense at times here this afternoon. And they're trying to throw it up here now at a first and goal at the eight yard line with six seconds left to play. Montana, incomplete. Three, three seconds to hands. Left. Three seconds, two seconds on the clock. Two seconds left on the clock. Second and goal at the eight. Now Montana is looking over to the sideline to get his next play. Herb Johnson, Dan Devine over there. Well, you couldn't want a better finish. Could not possibly. Two seconds left to play. Clock will start on the snap. Houston 34, Notre Dame 28. Montana going. And it's a touchdown. Hey. A touchdown taken at the corner. Unbelievable, unbelievable finish. Houston on top, 34 to 12, and now it's all tied up, 34 apiece. Was it in bounds or not? It was ruled a touchdown. Touchdown. Montana to Chris Hayes. Let's see if we can pick it up. Let's catch a kick camera angle here in the back goes out of the backfield Montana on the sidelines and from our vantage point we can't tell where the feet in college football you only have to have one foot in Notre Dame has scored the touchdown right here Lindsay there's a couple of Houston people just in the camera angle Haynes caught the football and here comes the all-important extra point it's tied 34-34 Naffel will hold and Joe Eunice will have to try to do it again it's down, Eunice kicks it, and it is good. Now Notre Dame has won the football game, 35 to 34, having to do it a second time, having sustained a five-yard penalty. Anything you want to say? Oh, I don't know what to say, Lindsay. Houston's got to be just unbelievably heartbroken over this loss. They were coasting along, only to see Notre Dame come back, and Montana has done it again. He has, in fact, Joe Montana has fought them from behind, so now this is Lindsey Nelson from Paul Horning and Frank Cleaver saying so long from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, and from all of us to all of you, a very happy new year. <laughs>